lies in waking up, for when we close our eyes, we can dream a better world. When we close our eyes, we can dream a better dream. But when we open our eyes to begin the work of faith, the power of worship is the same. When we enter this space, we can see from here a better place, a better world. When we enter the space of worship, whether it is a real space or a virtual space, we're here to dream a better dream. And when we leave this place, whether it's a real place or a virtual place, we begin the work of faith. So come in to worship and dream your dream. Find hope here for in a short time, we will begin the work of faith. May it be so. Amen. Advent means to me happiness all the time. I think Advent means time to prepare for Christmas. <laughs> I think Advent means when um, Jesus was born. Who do you say angels are? I think that the angels were people who had gone into heaven and work with God to help people who need their help. The angels were God's messengers. The angels told Mary she was going to have a baby. The angels helped Mary to know what to do. They tell the shepherds that that they should go see baby Jesus because he was going to be born. They help people. Who do you say the Magi are? The Magi were wise men who took gifts to Jesus. They followed a star that led to Bethlehem. The Magi came from far, far away. The Magi were the travelers who brought gifts. They went to go pay him respect because they heard that he was the king. The Magi presented Jesus with gifts of gold, of myrrh, and of frankincense. Who do you say Mary and Joseph are? Mary is Jesus' mother, who traveled to Bethlehem and gave birth to Jesus. Jesus' parents on earth was Mary and Joseph, so Joseph was Jesus' father. He supported Mary when they were going to Bethlehem. On the way, Mary went into labor. She gave birth to Jesus in a manger because there was no room at the inn. What do you say Christmas is? I think Christmas is the birthday of Jesus. It's a holiday that people celebrate to spend time with their friends and family. I like to sing Christmas carols with my family. Christmas is when my whole family and I get together. Christmas is about giving to others. Because the day that Jesus was born, the wise men gave him presents, and we kept using that tradition. Who do you say Jesus is? Jesus is Mary's baby. Jesus was born on Christmas. And his real father is God, and he performed miracles and taught people how to be kind and treat people how they would like to be treated. Some of the miracles that Jesus performed were that he healed people of their illnesses. Jesus taught children how to be nice to each other. Jesus also taught um, people about love and kindness.
Advent, we light the candles for hope. And for peace. Reading from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served my her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough pl places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. And for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, and surely the people are grass. The grass withers, and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will field his flock like a shepherd. He will gather, gather the lambs in his arms and gather them into his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Psalm 85, verses one to two and eight to 13. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sins. Let me hear what God, the Lord, will speak, or he will speak to his people, to his faithful and to those who turn to him from their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him and his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our, law, our land will yield its increase. Righteous will go before him and will make a path for his steps. A reading from the Gospel of Mark, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will, will prepare your way. 
the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with leather belts around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is, is coming after me. I am not worthy to, to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Amen. Would you pray with me? God, guide us in the way we should go. Bring us wisdom to understand your story. Bring us wisdom to know how it works in our lives. Amen. All four Gospels start in the beginning with a sort of geography of their own. A geography that we can find ourselves within, but also that explain where we are and where the people of Israel were when Jesus was born. All four New Testament begin in different places. The writer Matthew begins in genealogy, a whole family tree of the ancestors of Joseph and of Jesus. In the wilderness of Ur, the wild places where Abraham roamed and where his descendant, Jesse, put down roots. Jesse, the father of King David, and having established us in the lands and people that God promised. It then takes us to Joseph's house, where an angel comes to speak to Joseph. But the writer of Luke begins in a temple or a synagogue, where Zachariah the priest meets an angel, and then moves to Mary's house, where an angel comes to Mary. But the Gospel of Mark, which is where we start today, begins in the wilderness, where John, the son of Elizabeth and Zechariah, is living wild and calling to the people to repentance. And the Gospel of John begins in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, in the cosmos, before even the earth was made. But the word or the Tao or the song or the organizing force of the universe is creating, well, everything. The geography of the Gospels is both very particular and incredibly expansive. It's literally cosmic, oriented by the stars and taking place in a cosmic creation. But it's also particular to Judea, to Israel, to Galilee and Jerusalem. And the geography is both real and symbolic. There really is a wilderness on the other side of the Jordan, of rocks and hills and a few trees. There are real hills that people must climb, rivers to cross, lakes to sail. There are dark and shadowed valleys and steep, exhausting hills. There's also a political geography of what is the promised land what is part of the Roman province of Judea, where Herod holds sway? And what is a poor region of Galilee that is despised? And what is a threatening Persian empire that was once Babylon just east? One of the things that we forget is that the kingdom of what we think of as Israel was divided between Judea and Israel. And Galilee is on the other side of the political divide from Bethlehem. Imagine Google Maps, an image of streets is laid out for you in tiny sections, unrelated to the other sections. It's a flat representation that shows just streets. It's for driving, and it's very useful for driving. But a Google Map of Vancouver isn't really meaningful to somebody walking who needs to understand the terrain 
It leaves out some of the most significant information. What do you care if it's a steep incline if you're in a car? But if you're walking or biking, it's nice to know that Queen Elizabeth Park is the highest point. Google Maps are useful, but they leave out the meaning of the geography. And you won't learn much about what's happening between here and there, what's on the way. The images of the Christmas story we have are similarly flat, two-dimensional. Christmas card images, perhaps. A drift above time and reality. Now we here, we live in a place where we watch movies being made. I have seen snow in Steveston in July. I've watched movies where kids can cycle from Steveston to the Peony in five minutes. But I know that the Peony is miles away. But our understanding of the Christmas story is just as unreal without that sense of physical place. The political and spiritual geography, the historical realities that were written literally in the stones of the buildings. Now you and I know the history of Steveston and fishing, waves of immigration, race-based jobs. We may know some from even before those waves of immigration. We may know that these are the places that the Squamish and Suwassum people came to fish during the summer. We know the importance of tides and dikes against rising water. We know the history of churches in Richmond and that the Japanese people of Steveston were taken away and their land and businesses taken and sold and that Steveston United Church is still affected by that history. We know where the neighborhoods have changed from working class housing to mansions. The political, economic, historical and natural geography of our place is familiar to us and embedded in our conversations and our stories about family and place. This is why the Gospels try to tell us that geography of place that includes mountains and the valleys of history, the spiritual and religious roads and rivers, and the politics of place. The Gospels not only describe a physical geography that's important to the story, they also describe a historical and political geography, so we have reference points to where we are now. And also, very important, they show us a religious and a theological geography. Jerusalem is the historical, political, and religious heart of Israel. The temple there is the spiritual capital of Jewish hearts. Galilee is in Israel, the northern kingdom. But Jerusalem, strangely, and Bethlehem are in Judea, the southern kingdom. Separated for a thousand years, but those two kingdoms were once one great kingdom under David and Solomon. With this knowledge, the Christmas story becomes much more three-dimensional. Imagine that instead of looking at a flat surface from far away, you are set down in the middle of the buildings of Bethlehem. There are streets that take you different places, alleyways to explore, mud that might be stepped in, hot scorching sun, light that dazzles, and people that are strangers to us, and yet somehow familiar. So Nazareth to Bethlehem is no longer a couple of paragraphs and five minutes away. It's many days travel. The hills are rocky and hard. The valleys welcome shade, but difficult to traverse. The dirt road winds through villages and towns, and every pit stop and nighttime rest is hard to find. This also is our spiritual journey. Bethlehem was King David's home, and Bethlehem is where the Messiah is supposed to rise. And above all, this geography is spiritual. And all of the Gospels use as their foundation the words of the prophet Isaiah that begin, A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, and make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill brought low. And the rough places a plain, and the glory of God shall be revealed. 
The promise of Advent is that God will prepare a way for us to go, and we may prepare a way for God to come. In that promise, the rocky and broken terrain of our lives are made into the pathway. It is not in spite of that terrain and those difficulties that we find our way to God. It is within them and on them and through them. Whatever terrain we seek to find a way through, that is our way. And in this, everything is brought together, just as the Bible brings together all these different geographies of place and time, the political, the economic, the historical geography, the terrain of religion and theology, scrubby trees of family and belonging into a spiritual geography of a place that still needs exploration. Are you willing to explore the rough and broken terrain of your own being, the valleys of the shadow, the mountains that seem forbidding, so that God might penetrate even the darkest and most desolate place of you and speak the words of comfort and pardon? Hearing the words of John the Baptist crying in the wilderness of broken hopes and forgotten dreams can seem harsh. Repent! Turn around. This is the way. Prepare the way. Exalt in the valleys. Travel the heights with ease. It's the end of a journey and the beginning of a new one. It won't be easy, but it will be joyful. Amen.
Let us pray. Who are we, O God, that you should come to us? Yet you have visited your people and redeemed us in your Son. As we prepare to celebrate his birth, make our hearts leap for joy at the sound of your word and move us by your spirit to bless your wonderful works. We ask this through him whose coming is certain, whose day draws near, even your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, peace is not a thing we hope for. Peace is the way we live. We carry peace as we go, cradled in our hands like a baby that can change the world. Walk in the light, beloved, the beautiful light, here where the raindrops of mercy shine bright, shining around us by day and by night, is Jesus, the light of the world. Go in peace and serve the world. Thank you. 
Peace.